Welcome everybody. This is SharePoint Dev Ecosystem BMP Community Call. This is the monthly community call, so October 2019 call, uh, where we're going to go through what has happened in high level within the past month. So agenda for the day uh, is that we'll have a quick look on the on the latest news, monthly summary, and a few other details. So nothing too dramatical right now. Uh, to be honest, a lot of our engineering efforts and PM work is, is pending for Ignite announcements as well. So Ignite is coming uh, within a month or so. Uh, uh, where we will definitely demo uh, uber cool stuff and maybe some surprises for you as well. So that's also one of the reasons why there has been maybe a slightly slower amount of, of announcements uh, within the past month or so. And definitely as part of the community calls, we're going to acknowledge all the community contributors. We had a massive group of people once again contributing within the last month, helping everybody else in the community to succeed as well. Um, and which is highly beneficial because the whole idea of the open source and community is that we benefit from each other rather than every single one of us uh, banging our head against the wall. Uh, we actually have a joint objective and we share our object uh, uh, knowledge between the other and everybody will benefit. So that's a highly beneficial model for everybody. That's really the open source and community way of thinking on. I will give you something uh, free and you will hopefully help me and so on. Everybody who benefits out of it uh, without actually obviously taking your business away from the from the things. So now, Today's topic, the main topic will be building intranets and modern SharePoint. So we're going to talk about home sites. We're going to help us talk about start uh, sites. We're going to talk about how multilingual. Uh, the person who actually owns these uh, from a feature uh, group perspective is DC Padora. So BC, DC is going to take over the presentation when we get to that section. And that's going to be the main part of today's call. So in general, uh, we're looking into kind of a positioning these monthly community calls more on, let's say, Microsoft presenting, giving you more insights and additional input on how we do stuff and then the bi-weekly community calls which we have two of them uh, are mainly then uh, targeted for well not only targeted for community demos and community updates, but definitely more uh, open for community uh, demos in these calls. And you are more than uh, welcome if you want to demo anything on a SharePoint framework community call or in the SharePoint general dev community call. So in general, in SharePoint development or in a SharePoint community, if we think about those things, uh, we have a SharePoint developer community. We have a SharePoint community uh, in the tech community, Microsoft tech community side of the house. We have bi-weekly SharePoint framework community call happens 7 a.m. Pacific time on every bi weekly on Thursdays. And then we have the general SharePoint developer community call, which is more and more actually not just development. It is also about branding, provisioning, site designs, and low code stuff as well. Uh, so it's it, maybe we should actually start renaming some of these calls, not to explicitly terrify people by using the development term in the call, because especially in SharePoint, in cloud, in Office 365, all of these things are getting mixed. Uh, are you an architect? Uh, are you a developer? Are you an API person and everything else? It's, it's kind of a combined effort anyway. Uh, monthly community calls happen on second Tuesday of every single month. Uh, November 1 is then coming from month from now, from 12th of November. And these are, like I said, more on a quick summary from the monthly side and then uh, concentrating on a specific feature or a functionality uh, presented by a feature crew member. I haven't yet booked our November uh, uh, presenter, but it's going to be probably something related on provisioning or document management or the new uh, stuff which we will announce in Ignite. Hmm. Never know. I will let you know uh, in the in the social media before. Quick uh, recap on the links: SharePoint Dev documentation, AKMS SP Dev Docs, uh, SharePoint Developer videos. For example, all of the community calls are getting recorded and they're getting shared uh, in the SharePoint Dev channel. Um, and it has a lot of additional videos as well, not just about the development and extensibility, but also about branding, the lookbook sites and designs and all of that kind of stuff as well is, is located in SharePoint Dev video channel. And then SharePoint Dev issues. Uh, is AKMS SP Dev issues. If you are running into developer issues, API doesn't seem to work properly, please use this location um, for letting us know. And then we'll try to jump on, on your reports as fast as possible. And, and obviously, if there's something which really seems to be super, super, super critical and seems to be causing a lot of headache, and we've been having a few of these uh, obviously every now and then. Uh, please also feel free to ping me as an example in Twitter to let me know that there's now something which is visible, but also use the issue list first, because if, it, if it's on the issue list, so everybody else can actually follow that, oh, it has been now reported, and then we have a one common location where we can get, uh, update you on the progress of getting any issue actually resolved uh, when we work towards uh, resolving them. 
Uh, quick updates on the numbers perspective. Uh, so September 2019 uh, had a massive actually growth uh, on the extensibility side of the house. So SharePoint framework uh, usage, the third party SharePoint framework usage. So somebody has developed a extensibility and that's being the used is a third party SharePoint framework usage grew 15%. Uh, within the last month, and that's pretty awesome. It was actually 15.4%, and that, that is a massive number. We're still growing after two and a half years releasing SharePoint Framework at the rate of 262% year over year, which is insane. Uh, so the growth is insanely fast. The community is also highly active. So we had uh, 43,000 views in the SharePoint Dev YouTube channel with 238,000 watch time minutes, 15 9,000 GitHub uh, visitors, which is a massive number as well. Um, the BMP uh, components, BMP PowerShell, BMP Site Score, BMP JS generated, this is a wild number, 6,377 HTTP requests towards SharePoint Online in every single second during last month. That's insane. 6,377 requests in every single second worldwide towards SharePoint Online. But that's uh, that's kind of understandable when you have a look on the 27,500 tenants using those components. Uh, so and that generates something like 16, 17 billion, if I remember the number correctly, uh, HTTP requests in a month. So a lot of lot of uh, usage on these things. And and to be honest. Um, if we think about where we started like five years ago on building this open source community and community, we never <laughs> would have even imagined that we're on this level of usage on the open source comp components, but really good. Um, and it shows that there's a lot of trust uh, on the components and we keep on investing uh, on them as well. There was a lot of changes this month on those components. Uh, tenant templates, for example, was used 3,289 tenants and there's more than, uh, well, there's 1,176 1, overall contributors in GitHub for all of the stuff what we do, which is a massive number as well. So thank you for being active on this side of the house. Now, uh, SharePoint Framework, just to pinpoint again the graph, uh, just to show you uh, whatever, I don't know quite what happened again in August, but it started growing again on a completely new level. Uh, we are seeing across the board a lot of interest on the on the SharePoint Online, Office 365 and the SharePoint Framework usage. So uh, the metrics are going crazy at this moment, which is obviously a positive thing as well. So it, it is a safe thing to bet as well. Um, I do apologize, by the way, I didn't update the year over year percentage. It's I think it's 264. So it's slightly going down, um, which is understandable because the numbers are so huge already and uh, that we can't keep on growing 300% year after year after year because that would multiply to be an insane number. Absolutely. Now, uh, a few reminders on the other assets uh, before we go to the community contributions this month. Uh, SharePoint Dev Weekly, if you're interested on uh, looking into what's happening uh, in the community, uh, blog posts, uh, announcements from Microsoft side of the house, SharePoint Saturdays, we always cover those in these as well. Uh, episode 55 came out uh, yesterday. Yesterday, to, no, today, today. Today is Tuesday. Yes, today we released this. We recorded that yesterday with Waldeck. We did not have a, a visitor this time. We quite often has a visitor here. Mark D. Anderson was the previous visitor. And we always kind of cover a topic. We talk about certain things and then we go to the community articles. Um, these are intended to be 30 minutes and quite often they might be 60 minutes. And they're available as a YouTube video or as a podcast nowadays. So both options are definitely available. I think the podcast option is growing quite fast now. So clearly there was a demand for that one. Now, quick update on the user voice side of the house. Nothing actually dramatical here. No changes from last month, uh, which is partly because uh, I've been too busy. And uh, there's a few, a few things which we've been, uh, would have been able to do. So first of all, uh, the support for .NET Core uh, with CSAM, I can't promise this yet, but it seems to be that we're getting that to preview during this month, which would be already good. Uh, we want to do it in preview. So we want to make sure that it's working uh, properly. And then after that, the .NET uh, standard version, uh, of season uh, is then available uh, in GA relatively fast if there's no problems. We are using that closely within the BMP initiative as well. So that is our primary way of then testing things. And the second thing which uh, from the overall list of things, uh, just to pinpoint this one, uh, the provide an ability to write to manage metadata, uh, term store APIs using app only. So it was increased by a one vote last month, but it is actually 100% already supported. So if you go to that user voice item, you find a note from me calling it out that it's supported and how do you make that happen. Um, 
but we haven't actually updated the official documentation. That is on me to make that happen uh, through my uh, documentation channel. So I do apologize of not yet having a time on doing that. Moving on on the on the articles, uh, just to update you on what's actually happening. The, the October update, which is basically a summary of what has happened within the last month. What are the new web parts? What are the new samples? What are the new changes in the tenant templates or PowerShell side of the house that is now out uh, in the AKMS SP dev blog, so in the SharePoint developer blog. And there was a lot of people again contributing in the, in the monthly release, monthly level, and we're going to have a look on quickly on those next. So the list of people, uh, it is in relatively small font. Uh, I always need to adjust this to be in a quite small font to make sure that every single person who contributed within the last month uh, is able to um, is able to be covered here. Now, please let me know if we missed you for whatever reason if you're not in this list that but you did contribute i do apologize on that this is unfortunately a quite manual thing uh, to get uh, collected from the from many of the repos and many of the things what we do so there might be some issues there might be some accidents which might happen but we'll fix those definitely on the blog posts um, in the and in the messaging if needed these uh, people, a lot of these people work on the companies who've given uh, their employees the option to contribute uh, in the open source and community side of the house as part of their day to day work, which is really cool. And these are the companies who, who have given us the permission to call them out. Uh, from the companies where the people are working on on the previous slide. So a lot of more and more companies are actually being actively involved in the open source community as well and, and clearly promoting the model where we use the open source components and open source initiative uh, as together and also contribute on those as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for growing this side of the, the model as well. And the Microsoft side of the house is definitely growing as well. This is kind of debatable always that which of these, uh, some of them are engineers, some of them are documentation people, some of them are, are field, internal field people, uh, but it is growing definitely. There's a massively growing interest on taking advantage of the community and open source more efficiently uh, inside of the OneDrive SharePoint engineering as well, uh, which is an interesting dimension and uh, definitely in the future. So you will see more and more active engagement for many of the feature group PMs, uh, which is a good actually segue to the following slide. So as an example, we there's a high, high, high interest nowadays. So many of our feature crew members to come to these calls and actually present you directly what we're building uh, because they, they're highly excited on, on what they're actually designing and working together with engineering. So today we have DC Padur, um, who's a senior program manager from the feature crew side of the house, DC. Uh, I think you can introduce yourself and we can definitely jump on your side of the house as well. You've been, how long have you been working in Microsoft? Just giving some background notes uh, for the people. Uh, I've been with Microsoft uh, nine years, uh, almost to the week. Uh, yeah, 4th of October, 2010, yeah, uh, nine years in Microsoft. Seven yeah. years of that has been with SharePoint. Um, I spent five years of those seven years in the backend systems, working with the cloud infrastructure of uh, SharePoint Online and internal developer tools. Then past two and a half years, two years I've been working on the front end of the product, working on the actual product development, the SharePoint experiences, uh, modern SharePoint intranet experiences, all of that stuff in the past two years. Yeah. So that means that you're getting a, a green crystal pretty soon. So I got mine <laughs> three, three years ago. So yeah. So you're yeah. almost like a junior because I'm 13 years, um, almost <laughs> to the date actually as well. So yeah, time flies. Time flies. Yes, exactly. When you're having fun. But yeah, feel free to. I, I did take your slides and include it on on this presentation. But I think it's easier if we jump on your desktop if you share your screen. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. This is very exciting. I've. Uh, I've seen Vesa's internal news posts about how well our community is doing, and this is my opportunity to be on the call actually for the first time, and it's really exciting. The last I counted, there were some 220 people on the call. This is probably my largest uh, conference audience on a, on a phone call. This is exciting. Uh, thank you all for joining us this morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we deeply appreciate this opportunity and the partnership that we have with the community. And as Vesa mentioned, more of our uh, feature PMs are going to be part of this uh, experience, sharing their projects with you and gathering the feedback. And I would like to talk about a few things. 
uh, that's top of my mind, which all accrues towards what I call is helping our customers build awesome internet experiences on modern SharePoint. That's sort of the cohesive theme around all of this. And uh, a couple of the topics I want to address here are here. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, something very uh, core technical. And I have my engineering counterpart, Aninda, on the call. And uh, he will talk through the slides. The idea here is that we've been working on modern SharePoint, which is a client-side application, and improving the client-side application. And uh, we have come to a place where we made a significant change to the Pages application as a, as a, a client-side application. Uh, and uh, we really need uh, our community partners help in uh, testing out those experiences. And that brings me to the URL that I pasted. Anybody, if you have dev tenants that you constantly use for development and you would uh, love to help us out, please fill out that survey and we'll get in touch with you. I'll quickly uh, cover uh, root site. It's a very popular topic and I want to make sure uh, I'll uh, you know, address some top questions in there, but I'm going to quickly breeze through this. We've uh, rolled out a bunch of uh, blog posts about this, community uh, documentation about this, and features are rolling out, so I will quickly get through that. And then we'll get to spend most of our time on home sites and multilingual publishing for modern SharePoint. With that, I will go to this slide, and Aninda, if you can unmute yourself and start talking. Hey guys, uh, first of all, thank you for your contributions and your participation. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'll try to keep this short and simple. Um, we've, the, uh, we've done a major architectural overhaul. All of this is internal to the modern pages application. Uh, there isn't a net experience impact out of it, but uh, the goal here is to um, uh, do a few things. To start off with, uh, as you might know, um, Modern Pages was using a proprietary router for navigating across all its links. Um, uh, there was a point where React Router did not support a bunch of core functionalities that we required uh, for uh, large-scale enterprise portals. Uh, with this switch, we are actually switching to React Router 4.2, and we've built these extensions on top of React Router to start doing link interception, web view communication between a mobile host and a web view page, a page hosted as a web view, and so on and so forth. The actual implication from the development community is that going forward, uh, we might be able to start supporting custom routes. Uh, for instance, you might have a web part where the see all experience is something that you might want to have a custom solution for. And this sets us up towards um, achieving such forms of customizations. Uh, this also aligns the Pages application with other applications like the SharePoint Start page or uh, the Search app, for instance, which are all powered through React Router. So this alignment is required because that takes us to the next part of the motivations towards doing that work, which was to provide a seamless experience as you transition between all these various SharePoint experiences that we are building across the board, news, lists, uh, Start page, for instance. We want to keep this as a seamless experience without having the uh, end user have to uh, experience the full page reload or and the sweet nav and the chrome reloading we're kind of trying to avoid that and switch to a model where when you switch between all these applications the chrome is persistent the applications are much performant because a lot of the underlying components are reused between these applications within a session um, the uh, the other um, thing that we did as part of this work was there was a point in time where we weren't really sure how to go about with React. Uh, the BSD license had some implications, but uh, so we had this unnecessary interaction from a non-React um, uh, view to a React view, and that interaction was uh, a cause for a lot of reliability and performance concerns. And we kind of um, addressed that, and now we are we are a React aware solution and uh, we don't need to have this unnecessary interaction. So these were some of the updates as, uh, I mean, it, internally it's a pretty big change. So we really want you guys to uh, help us out here as you build custom web parts, as you add extensions to the page, as you, as you, uh, you know, add deep links to your canvas. If things don't work out, then we would really like to know and we would like you to share your experiences with us. If you see a significant impact on performance, for instance, we would like to know that um, uh, it's a big change and having you guys help us out here would really help. Uh, so DC has a list.
list and as you guys are interested please sign in and we're going to uh, basically fly you guys onto it and you can reach out directly to dc and me as you have concerns as you have expectations out of this and we are definitely going to try to um uh solve them thank you so much thank you aninda um so th th that was the call to action is uh, if you're willing please sign up in that in this link here it's also in the chat window uh, spoms slash test pages tech um, and i uh, would really appreciate that so moving on um, any questions on the chat window i don't okay i'll move on Ruth said, uh, quick, um, quick comment sorry just uh, for part of, uh, and for those who are waiting this also was the technical piece and then we'll go to the more on the functionality side of the house as well but just a pinpoint um the community isn't necessarily highly aware what is an application inside of SharePoint online but uh, just additional elaborating on that one so we built SharePoint online experiences using this application term and application functionality. And as an example, lists and libraries are applications. And then site contents is an application, modern pages is an application, and so on. So that's what the application means within this context, just to elaborate that slightly. But uh, yeah, thanks, Visa. Uh, yeah, so applications here, what we mean by applications are single page applications which are completely client side rendered using an SBFX core application framework um, yeah. to bootstrap them. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, next topic about root site. I want to reiterate. Uh, I think this is clear to most people. I want to reiterate: do not delete the root site of your of uh, your tenant or recommend it to any of your customers, anybody that you work with. Uh, we are strongly dissuading our uh, you know customers from de deleting their root site, even though it might be technically possible. We're hopefully, shortly that will also go away. And the popular ask nowadays is having a communication site at the root location of your tenant, of your organization. And um, new customers signing up for Office 365 starting April of this year have been getting a communication site at the root. And for the existing customers, we've uh, just about rolled out uh, an experience to swap an existing communication site to the URL of your root site location. And there's one other feature which will enable communication sites in situ, and I will to quickly go over those. And with these two experiences, which covers most of the scenario of how users, customers can get a modern communication site experience at their root. As I said, the first one is a site swap experience. It's already available for uh, you know organizations with less than 10,000 seats. Um, it's it's uh, done using PowerShell. You need to be an admin to have access to that uh, SharePoint uh, uh, on online management uh, PowerShell and run this and this documentation here. It's a quick PowerShell. It takes about a, a minute to complete, and at the end of that, you would have uh, an existing communication site at a different location would then be moved to your root URL location, and the old root site, the entire site collection, will then move into an archive location. So this is sort of the uh, most popular op option for uh, moving or getting a communication side experience at the root. Um, the next one is enabling uh, the communication side experience as a feature, as an experience on an existing root site. So for there are scenarios where moving the root site is not quite an option. So as long as classic publishing is not enabled on the site, you will then be able to enable the communication site experience on that site collection. And basically the root web of the site collection will then have uh, a modern communication site experience. Again, this is also documented in this URL here. This feature is not yet rolled out and we are working really hard to get that going and maybe with a surprising twist to this, which will delight, uh, I hope, most of our uh, uh, customers here and you all here as well. And uh, this, hopefully by end of this year, we'll start rolling this out uh, to everybody. Uh, next topic, the home sites. So, um, we, many of you might have heard about the term SharePoint home sites and seen the uh, uh, the recording from the SharePoint conference, being at the conference. A SharePoint home site is quite literally, it's, it's the top of your internet. It is a landing experience uh, that is built up with care and consideration to reflect the branding and the voice of your organization. It brings together the best parts of your applications and makes it make sure that the landing experience for the for your employees and your users are top notch and and that site is called the home site 
And Microsoft is enabling a great home site experience, a successful experience in two ways. The first one is to go build that one site with out-of-box capabilities or if required, extend it with the, uh, the awesome SharePoint framework and community integrations to build that one site which, re which reflects what you want uh, shown as a, as a representation of your branding, right? And, and uh, that, that was the journey to get to the place where a lot of this functionality is available out of the box. And then we went one step to see how can we make this uh, more successful? How can we make that one site successful by, uh, and we came up, we've come up with a couple of options to begin with, and, and we are excited about what this opens up as a possibility in the future. So it, I will ex uh, explain exactly what that is. And at this point, I'm gonna quickly switch to my demo. So this here is a, a, a home site of Contoso Electronics. And I'm gonna quickly walk you through uh, how Microsoft thinks about a home site and why we think the, uh, the individual components that come together are really important. And we'll begin with search on the top. For most of internet, one of the top functions of an intranet landing page is to help users discover content or find the content they're looking for with a quick search experience. So having the uh, cool new Microsoft search experience at the top of the, uh, the home site, which is automatically scoped to search your entire internet is functionality number one. And as you can see, you have the, the mega menu, the out of box mega menu that helps represent the information architecture of your organization in a nice visual way that helps users discover content and get back to things uh, find things that they really care about uh, using the navigation links that provided. And in the, in the section, if you look at here, we've introduced a new vertical section, and uh, this should be a feature that's already rolled out. And this vertical section is uh, allows you to have denser content on the page. And our hypothesis and our recommendation is that vertical section be used for content that is personalized to the end user. And we have a bunch of web parts that are available that target specific content to the users. So for example, the My Recent Documents or the My Frequent Sites, these are web parts that are unique to the user that visits this page. And this basically helps with the notion of having a me space right next to the we space. For a successful our research and a lot of uh, marketing has, uh, research has shown that uh, a home site, the top internet landing page, it does well when it uh, serves immediate needs of the users along with showcasing the branding and providing news uh, and important company links uh, right next to it. So having this vertical section be a personalized nature is, is a great benefit. And now that you have a vertical section that can have a background color, you can visually highlight what that what value that can be derived out of that section there. Looking into the main section, you obviously have uh, the news web part and a carousel layout. This again, this news layout has been rolled out to everybody. And having SharePoint News, the powerful news system out of box is great for uh, a home site. You can have audience targeting enabled. You can make sure the news is targeted based on the audience group of the user that visits the site. And the flexibility of the news web part is such that you can have multiple web parts on the same page to showcase different news types. And one thing I want to call out here is also the organizational news capability, where you can anoint a single site to be a source of authoritative news, and news posted there gets a special visual treatment when users uh, uh, come across that news article. And this home site will automatically be configured to be a source of um, authenticated news. And then the richness of social integration using, uh, you know, having stream videos and the new conversation web part, the Yammer web part that lets you interact with Yammer conversations right then and there inside the uh, SharePoint site is, is a cool new web part that helps with social interactions on the site. And scrolling all the way to the down, you have the out of box site footer that completes the story of having a, share, uh, a communication site that serves as the top level internet landing page. So you might wonder like, okay, this is a communication site with a bunch of uh, good out of box functionality. And what makes this a home site? And as I mentioned, a home site automatically has search scope to be internet wide. It also has the source, this site is also set as a source of authoritative news. And these are things you could anyway do on, on multiple other sites as well. The unique value here is that now this home site is integrated with the out-of-box SharePoint start page. The SharePoint start page, as you might know, 
uh, is very popular for users to get back to their SharePoint content. And you will notice that this is the new UX, and this UX is also rolling out uh, in, the, in this month. And this new UX now inherits, it brings the site branding and the theming and the navigation header footer functionality from the home site over. So what this means is no matter where your users start their day, it could be the browser default home site or they go log into office.com and click on SharePoint to get to their work. Either way, the home site and its content is available just one click away. And that's the value of a home site. We want to make sure, again, reiterating the concept of uh, me space and we space. The out of box, my uh, SharePoint start page is the out of box personalized start page experience. It is, it is all about the user that lets the user get back to the content they most care about, discover things that's most relevant to them, powered by the uh, intelligence of uh, Microsoft Graph. So now it's right next to your home site. So anybody who starts their day can quickly click on the home and get back to that home site. And as you can see, the sweet single page navigation between the start page and the uh, home site experience. So now going back to my uh, <coughs> slides, the other super uh, superpowers uh, for the home site is where now if you're using the SharePoint mobile app, and we strongly recommend that you do, the SharePoint mobile app now will have a unique entry point for this one special site in your organization. So imagine a new employee joining your uh, uh, your company and you they have their mobile app installed. They log in and pronto they have access to the home site right then and there and they don't have to know the URL, they don't have to know where to go. It's right there available for access to most important company resources. And that's again, the value of a home site is in making sure that it's easily available to where users are, and we are we are hoping to expand on this capability with more integration across the Office 365, in fact, the M365 ecosystem. So any feedback you have in how you would imagine uh, a, a landing page automatically showing up in the various places that users typically work, I'm open to that. Please, uh, you can um ping on the chat in the in the window here and i'm happy to have conversations as well but we are starting with this journey of integration with the start page and this unique experience on the sharepoint mobile app and i'm gonna see if i can do a quick demo of this so as you can see i have a sample site set up in here and i'm gonna quickly connect to this uh tenant and you can see that it's just a very simple powershell that lets you uh elevate an existing uh, <clears throat> communication site to be the home site. And if the demo gods are with me, I will not have a problem and I have a problem. Never mind. This is what I was afraid of and that's why I have pre-conned uh, uh, experiences. So as you can, so doing, when, when you execute this command, this my SharePoint link shows up in the navigation and then you have this unique single page application experience with the shared header navigation uh, and uh, branding uh, carried over to the SharePoint start page. I showed you a bunch of features that make up a home site, like how do you build a home site? And as, I can, as this list shows, most of them have already been shipped out. All of these features were conceived with the goal of helping our customers build a great home site experience. And those individual features have already been shipped out. Uh, search is already rolling out, and I think uh, hopefully done by the end of this year. The start page uh, refresh, the UX refresh is also rolling out this month. And the actual home sites functionality, which is the PowerShell that elevates a communication site to be a home site of an organization that uh, we're hoping to roll out right after Ignite. Um, again, uh, a quick overview. It's a, it's a home site, it's a communication site with superpowers, only one per tenant. And home site and hub sites are additive experiences. If you think about it, a hub is essentially a, a site that's been elevated to serve as the hub of a bunch of other sites. And you can then elevate another that one step more and make it your home site. So your home site can also be a hub site. And it requires admin action. So if you, uh, I've heard some questions about this. So when Microsoft rolls out home sites, uh, organizations don't automatically get a home site. An, a tenant admin has to take action to set the site to be their home site. So that's when there is a conscious decision to roll out one site to be the top of your internet, and that's a, a conscious gesture. It's not a new site template, so there's no confusion about creating yet another template. It's just uh, elevating an existing communication site to serve a, a bigger purpose. And it's not a, a design for a communication site. 
we we have given you the ingredients that let you mix and match and put together with the rich power of the uh, page canvas and you you can feel free to make uh, the home site your own with your own customizations um as i said you you build a comp site and one thing i want to call out is after you have a, a, a communication site to serve as your internet landing page you if you would like to move it to the root site location so you it enjoys a short url that most of your users might be familiar with you could do that with the swap gesture and then run the powershell to make it a home site which then elevates it to be the top of your internet so uh, the first superpower is the integration with the start page that I showed you and the special home button on the SharePoint mobile application is the next one. And as I mentioned, we are exploring more and I'm I'm hoping to be on this call again in a few months and share those future plans with ho of, of home sites. But we are excited to the possibilities of what home sites can be uh, with this one click configuration to multiple user entry points. That's what we are uh, very excited about and I'm open to feedback here. And as I said, a home site is also automatically configured to be uh, having a, the search on the site is automatically configured to be tenant wide and it's also said to be uh, uh, a source of authoritative news or the organizational news site. So as a, as a modern uh, SharePoint infra, you know, information architecture, the, the home site is the top of your internet and the recommendation is it's uh, linked via navigation to the other top hubs of your organization. So you can think of uh, the uh, and the HR system being a HR hub, uh, your legal can be a legal marketing and sales. Each of them have individual hubs that uh, do take care of the day-to-day -day rhythm of business, but they have a, a connection through the navigation to the home site of your organization, which serves as the landing page. Users start their day on the home site, uh, quickly get to the content that they need to and continue the day of work. Uh, that rounds up my conversation about home sites and uh, leaves us enough time uh, for uh, multilingual publishing in modern SharePoint and uh, associated questions and answers as well. So at this time, I want to take a pause. And um, Andy, Vesa, anything on the chat window you want to call out that we can address quickly? Hey, DC, it's Andy. You might just one more time just uh, restate the difference between the root site and the home site. I think you did that uh, in the last section, but there were a couple of questions. We answered them, I think, but maybe just for uh, audio purposes, that would be great. Very good. OK. Um, the, a, a root site is the, the, the one out of box site collection that is uh, available for all uh, organizations, all customers who sign up for an Office 365 SharePoint tenant. So it's the shortest URL. You have the uh, contoso.sharepoint.com, and that is the that is literally the one root site. So I'm going to quickly go to this. There's a one root site. So typically, uh, uh, the root site has been a classic team site up until April of this year, and starting April, it's now a communication site. On the, a home site, on the other hand, is uh, a communication site, a modern communication site that's elevated to be the top of your internet. A root site is more about the location, the URL of the of the site. That's what root site means. Whereas home site is about the functionality of the site. What does that site? What can that site do? What is that extra superpower does that site have to serve as the top of your landing page? And as I mentioned. Uh, they can coexist. So you can have your home site at the root site location uh, by moving your new communication site to the root site location using this uh, site swap gesture. Um, I hope that made sense. I'm, uh, I'm going to move on to multilingual publishing. I'm also hoping to do uh, a demo of this. So um, it's like Multilingual publishing and support for multilingual uh, experiences has been a, a top ask in modern SharePoint, and we are uh, very close to having that available to our customers. We, um, uh, I, we've been working on it for uh, uh, most of this year, and we are really excited to be uh, sharing this with you. And uh, the idea here is that um, <clears throat> in a in a communication scenario, we are after what helps our customers on board to modern SharePoint for a communication scenarios. And when, when I say communication, this is about content publishing and having a site for users to come consume information that's relevant to their uh, you know, day to day business or anything pertaining to their, to their work life. So curated content publishing scenarios. 
So what we have done is we started with a minimal uh, a scope of uh, publishing scenarios for pages and news in modern communication sites. And now we're looking at the language construct for, uh, to begin with. So you would have English and French and Spanish as languages supported. We, we are moving away from uh, no, not having the uh, a local differentiation. For example, French Canada versus French French. Uh, while there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, a stylish and, and, and maybe even, uh, you know, some language differences, we are uh, uh, betting on having an individual language variant for having this uh, multilingual publishing experience. And we're also including the multilingual user interface as a part of the uh, scope of this work, and which means the site name and the navigation footer all of these experiences that make up a publishing uh, a communication site experience are part of this uh, what we'll roll out as multilingual publishing for uh, uh, it and hopefully by the end of this year and uh, explicitly out of scope I, I just to reiterate who so are not looking at collaboration scenarios as i mentioned multilingual experiences can have different flavors different facets uh, interactive communication or co-authoring, collaboration on using lists or process workflows. All of these things can also have a multilingual aspect to it, but that's not in scope for uh, what we're working on right now. Uh, that obviously includes the lists and libraries at this point. And we're not looking at a language as a permissions construct. So we don't, we, it's, this is about facilitating content publishing and consumption in multiple languages, but not access restrictions based on language as a parameter. So we're not doing that. And we're obviously we're not trying to rebuild variations as a modern experience. We have completely rethought about what does it mean to have a multilingual experience in this day and age in, in a cloud experience, and that's what we are after. So with that, let me see if I can actually do a demo. So the journey, and uh, you will all be excited to know that uh, you are the first audience outside of Microsoft seeing a live code demo of uh, the multilingual experience. Vesa has been a proponent of uh, you know, showing live code demo and these things to get uh, the dev community excited, and I'm, I'm happy to share this with you. So <clears throat> as you can see, this is a, a new experience for site administrators uh, to then enable multilingual for an individual site. And as you note, uh, multilingual publishing is now is, is a site scoped experience. So, so individual sites and, and the site administrators can decide if that site would uh, support multilingual experiences. And it's a simple toggle, and then you get to choose, uh, you know, languages that you want to support. And uh, in, in a, a code that's not yet landed is where you can select translators to be associated with individual languages. And I'll talk about where those translators come into play. So content is created. This is again a, a post that I've created. Uh, imagine content creation the way typically that happens. And once content is created in the primary language, the content creator can then engage with the translations experience and then kick off translations. So what this does is makes copies of this page as it stands today and puts it in uh, separate folders for every individual language, in this case, French and German. So here I want to call out the fundamental architectural choice that we've made. So we have made a single site multi-page architectural choice for multilingual page publishing. So what this means is if there is an English page, there is a corresponding uh, French page and a German page backing up uh, the, that individual pages. And we make a one-time copy at page creation time to uh, get started with the translations. So at this juncture, what happens is based on the email addresses provided with for the translators, the translators have been notified uh, that a new English page has been created with the link to the corresponding French page or the German page. And then the translator can then go into the page and then uh, update all the English content in the page to the corresponding French or German language and then publish the page. So now what this means is this particular page is now available in uh, multiple languages. And that brings us to the consumption experience where when you uh, uh, when a user is, uh, lands on a site, uh, the user's language is automatically detected. And once it is detected, we are able to render the content that's available for the user in that language. And then also provide a dropdown on the top right side that lets you switch between the available languages. So in this case, I had pre-prepared this to have English and French. And as you can see, this English site has a, a news carousel experience that is rolling up all the English news and all of these uh, you know, quick links are available in English 
and here is another quick link web part aware with content in english and all, most of the all of the content here is in english so switching to french will now render the uh, site in french and if you are a french user we automatically render this french site for you so you wouldn't have to go to english and then come back to french so you can uh, we'll, uh, we uh, we can detect your language and show the content in that language and what you will note is this this uh, roll up web part automatically just picks up the french variant of e uh, french translation of each of the pages that were shown in the english language and then users can you know engage with this and read the content in the french language so this language selection is in the scope of the site where even though my language uh, primary language is english i am choosing to read the content in french and i can continue reading the content in french so this kind of sums up the uh, multilingual experience from the cons uh, consumption end so from a from a 10000 uh, foot view if you look think about how do i have a multilingual site experience so it begins with the site administrator turning on multilingual support enabling the languages that uh, he or she chooses to have an available on the site and then assigning the individual translators for those languages that's optional but if you have translators we uh, the system will automatically do notifications for you the next step is setting up the site so the structure of the site so the site uh, the primary editor of the language primary language will then have a site name and the you know create the navigation and the out of box site footer and then the translators with their language in the corresponding uh, supported languages would then go and update the site title and update the navigation and the footers and now the site structure is ready next comes the home site and the uh, the home page of the uh, site and um, uh, the other article pages in the site so we individual pages can then be kicked off for translations the translators will then get notified and uh, the translators can go into the individual pages and then up uh, and update the translation update the content in there so when the, when a published page when a published english page for example in this case is updated that also sends a notification to the translator letting them know that content has been updated and then the uh, they would then be able to decide if that translation is uh, applicable to that language and this is where we think uh, the the modern way the new way of doing uh, translations is not literally having identical uh, structure and identical content it is about having flexibility for individual languages to represent the content the best way they think so they, we've heard of scenarios in our research where you know the, you know having images on one side of the page and text on the other side of the page might be good for you know the left to right content readers so maybe if the if a site has english and arabic support the arabic page might want the image on the on the flip side and not on the on the other side so may you, allowing these to be individual pages that have their own life cycle uh, um, behooves for a, be, a better experience in content creation and content consumption so that's the reason for our single site multi page architecture choice um one thing i want to call out is at this point we are not doing auto translations uh, the system does not automatically translate any content uh, and this is primarily because we we have seen scenarios around customers wanting a high level of control over what gets translated and how it's translated and making sure that the primary language content uh, and the translated content are of high fidelity they have the best quality before it gets published and there are there are people who actually verify the content be before it gets published and as i showed end users can switch between the available content uh with the with the switcher in the in the in the header with the language switching experience in the header and the search and the roll up web parts which is the news or the highlighted content web parts will automatically respect the language settings of the page so as i showed if you have a home page with a news web part another highlighted content and multiple other search experiences and when a copy of that page is made in a different language those web parts will automatically filter content uh, to that language so this is the top down view of uh, uh, the 10000 foot view of multilingual publishing so we obviously have some time left and i uh, want to uh, recap uh, the the four messages i want to deliver the first one being hey we need your help with testing the new um uh, a modern uh, client side application the the way we are shipping modern experiences with, with client side application we have made a, a significant architectural change we'd like your help with uh, testing that so please respond to the uh, 
uh, survey link here. It's also in the chat window. Root site, don't delete it, uh, swap it and replace it with the communication site and details are here in this uh, URL. And uh, <coughs> home sites, it's a, the quick way to think about it is it is the top communication site of your organization with special superpowers. And we're hoping to roll out the, the superpowers aspect of home sites uh, um, um, later next month. And uh, multilingual, finally, we have multilingual support for modern SharePoint in, in the publishing world with pages and news. And uh, we hope to have that rolling out by end of this year as well, uh, possibly early next year. Uh, continue, begin the journey this year and then hopefully end up uh, uh, right after the holidays. And support for multilingual pages and news in communication sites. We are with a single site multi page model. And with that, I'm open to questions. That's my Twitter handle. I'm happy to uh, engage with uh, our community in Twitter as well. And uh, I look forward to your participation with this. Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, by default, uh, when, a, when, a, uh, when a user logs into SharePoint, uh, SharePoint is aware of the user's display language choice. It's uh, set either through the AAD uh, directly or depending on how your authentication is set up, uh, it's available in the, uh, in the AAD user object and it's synced down to SharePoint uh, user profile. It's the, the name of the service is changing in the cloud, but it's typically it's what's known as the user profile service of the uh, SharePoint service. And that makes it available uh, to every SharePoint experience when a user logs in. So we automatically know a user's default language choice, no matter what browser you are using or which country you are in. But in case that is empty, we then default to the browser language. So there are scenarios where some, some, for some reason the user's default language is not being set. In that case, we will uh, pick up the browser language. Uh, and that would be the language of the user uh, user's choice. And then if content is available, if published content is available in that language and you're trying to access the site, it will automatically show you that content with the option of having uh, of switching to other published languages uh, um, in the dropdown. Hey, DC, it's Andy. There's another question about what languages are supported. Um, Good question. So we, we have about 50 languages that are supported uh, and uh, we'll make sure that's uh, part of the documentation. You can go see that today. In, if you go to the language settings of any modern site collection today, you see a, a, a list of about 50 languages. I think it's 49 or 50 in there. And that's the list of languages we are supporting for multilingual publishing. There was a different question on home sites permissions for guests and external users. Can you talk about uh, how that works? Is that a specific question about like um, because it is a, a, a communication site, it's power, it it behaves like any other communication site with external access. So uh, the, the the I don't the external access do not have a SharePoint start page experience. So the that integration works best for users inside your organization. But if you have enabled the site to have external access, they will be able to consume the content in the home site itself uh, as as they would with any other communication site that's externally shared. It's the SharePoint start page integration that will not work because the start page integration assumes or requires that the user accessing is actually part of the tenant and they have uh, the, the, the way the page is set up is uh, that it would work only for users that are the, that will not work for external users. Great. And I actually don't, um, I don't know, Andy, do you know if external users have SharePoint mobile app access? Oh yeah, that was another question about um, how multilingual would work in the mobile app. Uh, I do believe external users can get access to resources in the SharePoint mobile app, but I'm not 100%. Okay, so uh, that might be a follow up for us to get back. But uh, and uh, so the uh, so the mobile app is something that we are working on, and we are hoping to have this uh, the similar language switching experience. And there is obviously a twist with. Uh, there is a user language uh, uh, option, uh, you know, problem, and there's also the device language, which is what typical applications end up respecting. And uh, we're working through that. I I don't yet have a solution to that I can discuss with you right now, but that's that's, that's definitely top of our minds right next after we roll out the web experience first. And one question on my side that keeps on coming up: What about the navigation translation and titles? Uh, we talked about that one with you a while back, so I think I know the answer. But so um, we 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 don't auto translate. So as I mentioned, the, the, none of the custom content from 
uh, users, uh, be it site title or navigation names, label uh, names or footers or uh, actual page content. None of the custom content, uh, you know, user content is automatically translated. But it is possible for uh, you know uh, uh, the site editor and the translators to go in and configure the site in the various languages that it's intended to support. So the way it would go is an English user will go create the English label. I mean, an, an, an English editor uh, and, uh, uh, will go create the labels and the navigation nodes and the page content or whenever they get and the site footer. The French translator who also has edit permissions will then go and update the label in the French language and we automatically detect that the user is French and they are trying to update the French language label of the site and we automatically do it for you at the back end. So this is the class, this is the 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 multilingual you me interface, the multilingual user interface uh, experience and uh, that works well with the supported languages of the uh, site as well. So it's the same set of languages that will be supported for uh, the user interface, which is the site navigation label and uh, names and such, and the page content, the language in which the pages themselves are published. Did that answer your question, Vesa? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I will flip actually back on uh, my slides because we're running out of time as well. There was a one comment related on is there an ex external costs uh, related on translation, and that depends on a customer. So because and there's no automatic translation. Uh, it really depends on a customer and, and deployment design who's actually doing the translations and it's not Microsoft who's doing the translations, right? Do you think? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Yes. Cool. So uh, we're running out of time. I, there's, there's always so much questions to ask and answer. Um, uh, like DC said, please free, uh, feel free to reach out to DC. And it is DC Padur uh, at DC Padur in Twitter as well. Um, and we'll definitely keep on having uh, feature crew PMs uh, in these monthly calls. We unfortunately did run into the 250 attendee limit today. Uh, so there was the problems of some people actually getting in. Uh, we're looking into potential alternative options on host and the calls then outside of the teams if that seems to be a recurrent issue. Uh, I would say uh, join early and then you will definitely get to the call, right? Um, <laughs> but next uh, uh, community call uh, is the SharePoint framework a community call on this Thursday. That's 7 a.m. this Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific time this Thursday uh, at 10th of October. And over there, we're going to talk about the latest in SharePoint framework and development practices. I think we have three demos uh, coming up there. Uh, really cool stuff uh, helping on the contribution side of the house, uh, community guidance, GitHub guidance, then two different uh, actually three different uh, really cool samples. Uh, for example, uh, bot integration directly in modern SharePoint uh, using a extensibility with SharePoint framework. But that's on Thursday and obviously recording will be out within 24 hours and you will see a blog post uh, in the AKMS SP Dev blog and you will see a YouTube video coming out in the SharePoint uh, Dev YouTube channel. And if you follow up on us in social media, uh, you can easily see when that is happening. But within 24 hours after this call. But that's it uh, for today. So thank you, Andy, for helping. Thank you, DC, on the on the awesome presentations and covering a lot of ground uh, uh, there. And also on the technical page uh, discussion, that was a really interesting thing as well. Uh, potential future scenarios with that is, is super, super interesting. So. But let's definitely stay in touch and thank you everybody for joining today. Thank you, DC. Thank you, Andy. Uh, one more time on, on taking the lot of the questions. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you all. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Vesa, for setting this up.